Piu, freu te prepea, prepea te freu. Welcome to a pint and two shots. Coming to you from the G4 podcast studio with part-time pundit and average actor Stephen Purden and bringing a wealth of knowledge and questionable patter, it's our no-nonsense dafty Chris Toll. Completing our front three, it's the man himself. All the way from the tap end of Stevenson, it's Grado! Welcome to a Pint Two Shots, it's a podcast, it's a football podcast, we're live here at the G4 Claim Studios in Wisha, and what a couple of guests we've got today, we've been excited about this for the last couple of weeks, thanks to G4 uh, for making it happen, but welcome from Motherwell, we've got none other than Shook Kettlewell, it's Stevie Frail. Welcome Chris, welcome good man. It's a good one. So tell us, it's been a, an amazing past couple of months for you, is it not? I has say si. it's been a it's been a bit of a whirlwind in terms of everything that we've had to face. The games have been tough, they've been challenging. Um, a lot of change, obviously. The football club found ourselves in a in a tough spot, obviously. But I think I think the biggest one that I speak about, and I'll get to this in a minute or two. But Steve will tell you that our thoughts has changed when he came in, no doubt. But uh, nah, in general, I think he was getting the first couple of wins under our belt when when I took over interim charge. And just trying to get the players to buy into what we were doing um, and what we were asking them to do. And I think um, I keep speaking about not overcomplicating it. So sometimes when you ask simple instructions of players and you get them, uh, you get a slight change of system and what you're doing and all the rest of it. Um, and you get a couple of wins. Sometimes you need the wins for people to believe in what you're asking them to do. You know, right, that's been right. the big thing that I've spoken about. Um, and then, as I say, when this man came in beside us, then that's just accelerated the process. Um, but it's, so, it's what, so, so hold on. I mean, what did you do the first day? You get told that you're going to be taken in charge. But what's, what's that like when you're going to dress and you go right? I'm in charge. What, what, what do you say to them? See, before you answer that, is it true that you tell them you didn't want the job at the start? No, no, right, okay. no. I, it was just I, a paper talk then. No, it was, it was never about telling people whether I wanted the job or not. I, again, I, I go really hard in these factors. I, I'm never begging anybody for a job. I've always said that. If I'm good enough to do something, then I believe in football. I think you see parents now and agents champ people's doors and desperate to see if they can get their kid into a football club nah, or get them a nah, position nah. in a team and all the rest of it. And I, I don't believe in that, but I don't believe in it for players. I don't believe in it for... <laughs> For coaches and managers, Chris. To be honest with you, I think that you have to. I, I think you have to earn your stripes, and I think you have to kind of show people that you're good enough at what you do. Mm-hmm. So, never told anybody I didn't want the job. But what I, equally, I think the guys at the board level and chief exec, etc., will, will tell you I never went for an interview. I didn't pitch my name forward. I felt that if, if I was good enough and I was what they were looking for, then they would They'd certainly ask you. me the question, oh, and that right. was kind of how I looked at it as well. And um, probably add a layer on it as well with with, with Stevie. Um, I never specifically had an assistant in my mind. Um, I kind of wanted to give myself a wee bit of time as to where I wanted to go with that. We never worked together. We never had a, a relationship as such. Really? That's interesting. Um, and Did you find him on LinkedIn or something? I think it was kind of what his name to else wanted to work with me. I think that's what he was standing. No, no, far from it. I think what the, the, the bit that was really appealing to me was Stevie was they making phone calls and was they sending text messages to ask for the job. Right. I'd done my homework and um, I think we'd cross paths as a 20s, under-20s manager at Celtic as he was and I was at Ross County at the time. Um, and I'd done a wee bit of homework and you know spoke to a lot of people and suggested that it was a guy that knew how to do the job with a wealthy experience in the game. Um, and we sat and we had a, I think we had a coffee. coffee didn't we? we didn't even get a beer that day. No, we just had a coffee. Um, we had a rich one. Just, What's that? The Irish one? No, it wasn't even Chris. No, <laughs> no, unfortunately. Um, but we, we, we just sort of hit it off. And I think sometimes you make a connection with everybody talks about what's your philosophy, what's your ideas, and all the rest of it. I think sometimes the, the good bit, probably for the two of us, is our philosophy is very changeable. It's it, We, we yeah. don't think that one size fits all. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to sit in the room with the person that was telling me that, uh, that they just read Pep Guardiola's book <laughs> and they were going to reinvent the game of football. <laughs> um, but I sat with somebody that had an absolute wealthy experience in the game that's seen it very 
very, very similar to what I do. And um, depending on what the task was you were given and what the challenge was, then we need to find the best solution. We need to mm-hmm. find the best formula to try and win games of football, to try and we both believe in developing players because we've got a past of, uh, you know, a history of doing so. Um, so there were so many factors that, that worked out really well, specifically for the two of us. Um, and I think it's fair to say it's been good so far, hasn't it? I think we've, we've both really enjoyed it and uh, and I think the players, most importantly, have been receptive to it as well. Mm, definitely. Aye, definitely. I mean, you look at the players, I mean, Van Veen, he's just went, he's come on leaps and bounds. I mean, the guy, he's been linked with Rangers a wee bit as well, hearing things here and there, but a few months ago you wouldn't have thought that, but that's credit to what you are doing. How much were you selling for? What age is this, Kevin? 31. 31. 31, yeah. I mean, I go the weekend. Was a thing See that first touch? touch. That was <laughs> phenomenal. There was, a, there was actually a better touch in the game. I don't know if you've seen the highlights or yeah, any on social media. There's a, I don't know if you remember years ago, Barthez to Zidane. And yeah, yeah, hear me yeah. out when I say this here. Yeah. He throws it out and he sort of Cruyff turns it as the ball's mm-hmm. landing. I, I we said that. that. We've done our video analysis and uh, the, yesterday and Monday we done the analysis with the players and we kind of showed the clip and saying the last time I did see a touch like that was Zidane. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does it, he gets filled and the boy gets the yellow card in the process. But we're standing at the side applauding, you know, yeah. we're all the supporters at the I, time when he does I. it. So, nah, he's a, he's a bit of a maverick in terms of how he plays, but I think that's why we all pay our money, isn't it? That's what, that's that's what, what you want to see. He gets you off the edge of Mm-hmm. Seat and he's he's got that in spade loads, but the goal was just uh, just the icing in the cake, I think, for the Aye. performance that he put in again on Saturday. I mean, even like the goal at Park Eden, I mean, the only team there. Never seen him. Ah, you did. Don't you start. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 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 Talk us through it, Tom. He's, he's, by the way, he, he gets a he gets a name for more than a turn of pace. He, he looked like what well, Billy was at that point in that game. No, he is so, quick. He's one of the quickest. Quick. Yeah, he's very quick. That's strange. Then people are like anytime you watch the games, the commentators always say, "Oh, he's not going to win a foot race," but it's it's the same with Carter Vickers as well. The Yankees slow, but he's rapid. Aye. So, but he's. Tell you what, you've got an absolute gem in your hands with that boy. There's a few in the team now that are that are crackers like Johnson and stuff like that, you know. Mm. And I'm I'm a big fan of Slattery as well. I like Slattery. Oh, I think Slattery's yeah. a great player, man. Yeah. So I do. So he's he's obviously he's doing something right, you know. He's have changed it in within a matter of a couple of months. Mm-hmm. And like I said to you before we started, he's just really pulled it out of the fire. So more power to these boys. Yeah. Appreciate that. <sighs> Talk us about that because. You are what the, the only team to go to Park Eden take points this season. Steve, we'll come to you. How did you? How was that day for you? <laughs> that game. Aye. Uh, my background. It was. It was relatively tough. Being brought up a different side of the city than you were. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> all joking aside. No. It's. Uh, it's funny. You sure? How was that for you? <laughs> <laughs> as a coach. As a coach, and obviously the manager prepares the team, and my job is to just assist them. You prepare them all week. And to go into a game like a game, it's a team at Celtic and come away knowing that your game plan has worked. And not only that, you've got a result. Mm -hmm. It's it's probably the most pleasing thing you can have. Mm -hmm. It was a great result, but we were more delighted with the performance. But like uh, um, was 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 asking you earlier on, you go into, did you you start, did you get the job? And then when you officially got the job, you took on um, Steve, is that right? Yep. Yep. But... When you when you go in the first day, right, you're you're in charge at the end of the season. Is it because you were at the youth you were at the youth club? Taking the eighteens and the reserves. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you know the players? Did you know everything about them? Was it a how was your? I want to know what your first day is like. No, I think I think the, the only player that I'd worked with previously was uh, Blair Spittle. So mm-hmm. I'd had uh, I'd taken him up to Ross County, so it was only really one player. You kind of know the boys a little bit through passing in the corridors and all that type oh, of stuff. Nice. Um, but. I think the best thing for me, and I kind of, I've said this a lot, see when I look at management, I did a spell at Ross County, I had a chunk of time out the game and then obviously coming back in to manage at Motherwell. Um, the best part for me was I didn't know anybody and I didn't know anybody anything. You know, mm. I had a long affinity with Ross County, spending sort of 12 years up there as a player, a coach, a manager. Um, and, and I've and I've never really been feared for the awkward conversations. It's always the, the thing that I don't mind. I, I feel it's your job when you sign up for it. That's the thing that you've got to do. Telling players that they're leaving the club, telling players mm. that they're not playing in a, in a match day. But see, when you've had that spell of, some for me, sometimes more than a decade, knowing people, and then you have to go in and have certain conversations and all the rest aye, of it, it's, it's slightly different, eh? Mm. And I think from my point of view that I enjoyed the fact that I didn't come in, I hadn't signed any players, so I didn't owe anybody anything. I hadn't had a relationship. I hadn't had a period of time where I'd worked with them. So it was purely a blank canvas for me to come in mm. with my ideas, with, with my message. And, and from that point of view, and, and I kind of said this, 
it been well documented and, and it wasn't to be all empowering or anything like that at all. I, my opening line was pretty much, this is how it's going to be. Um, and anybody in the room here, that and it was the full staff and players at the time, anybody that doesn't want to be a part of it, stick your hand up now. And, and I'll, and Did I'll, anybody stick their hand up? Nobody put their hand up. <laughs> Tea uh, woman. <laughs> 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 uh, so that, there was there was nothing, um, but I'd even I'd, I'd, I'd even sort of sidetracked as well. If you don't want to put your hand up just now, come and see me Aye. individually. If you don't want to embarrass me, but there wasn't any of that. And, and again, it wasn't for me to see the all conquering. It was just that I knew I had a short space of time to prepare mm-hmm. for the first game. And what I didn't want was you know you know what it's like with alpha males and all the rest. Mm-hmm. They might be sitting in a dress room. You end up with four or five guys that think you're talking nonsense and they want to go a different way. So for me, I felt I gave everybody a chance. And if I seen any kind of fractures within that then it was easy because I'd already spoken about it you know so um, that was a big one for me just to make sure that everybody was on the same page probably the other one that I would I would give was I spoke about a power group I believe in a power group in a dressing room and by mm. that I just mean that probably your four or five sort of when I say leaders but senior maybe the ones senior, senior guys because right? it's 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 hard Chris because captains now it's a bigger job everybody speaks about a manager being a bigger job you know mm. before we always seen guys like I'll use a Walter Smith or something for example right. they ran absolutely everything but football clubs have got so many moving parts now that I think it's difficult for one person to stay on top of every aspect yeah. but I also think it's really difficult for a captain to stay on top of everything I think you need support for three or four senior players in the dressing room so that's a way I've worked before and I thought that that was quite good for us as well because you try and pick different generations you know there's one or two younger ones in there that have played games couple of senior guys and then before long you've got a group of guys that pretty much run and manage your dressing room which again is massive at a, a football club to be successful I, I believe so you see look obviously uh, you've when you've came for Ross County you were you had the joint manager's role yep. at Ross County how that must have been a bit of a pain in the arse <laughs> nah, no, 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 not at all. I, again, I spoke, I spoke loads about it. See, at the time when I took that job, uh, neither one is. We, pff, usually, you take on a job when you're in a bad situation. We were favourites for uh, for relegation at that time, mm. and it was myself and Stevie Ferguson, who's still um, a really close mate of mine, one of my best mates in the world. Um, and he's got a different job now. He's a chief executive and all the rest of it at Ross County. Um, and it was neither one of us had an ego so mm. we never had an assistant so it was one of those ones where neither one of us had been a manager we felt it probably suited quite well for the two of us to come in together um, it wouldn't work at a Rangers or a Celtic or an mm, Aberdeen right. or something but it probably fit at the time for Ross County and quite proud of it as well I keep saying one promotion the first year asking right. won the Challenge Cup and then kept them in the, the Premier League next year so when people say mm. it was weird and it maybe didn't work I would argue that right, case right. Right. but I think as a progression Chris I think it was good because I always knew I wanted to be a manager, right. you know. So from from that point of view, I was never ever scared of going in and being a manager myself. It was fine. It was just that that was how that situation fell at the time, right. um, and it worked. As I say, it did right. work. But moving forward, it's not going to work for every club, and probably most chairmen don't want it either. Right. So um, it's absolutely fine in that sense. Was there ever a time like? Joint managers and that that you're still in there and he's about to make a sub and you're going nah he's staying on. Nah, I, I, I got, <laughs> I've got a couple of decent stories about it. There was we, we used to have we used to have a situation previously where it's totally different now because Stevie had a great one on Saturday for us we sort of changed our shape and made a substitution at the weekend and it wasn't something that was in my head and they planted the seed in my ear and then before you know it you know it's wrote out in a piece of paper we've spoken to the substitute he goes on and then we finish the game we score a goal within that Mm. period so it's great it works but the way we used to go was if you believe in something um, then you you know the person that stands forward and says I'm sticking to this and you know I'll name my colours to the masters and it was as quick as I'm saying it now it was literally I think we should keep that player on or I think we should take that player off right. why because I fancy he'll score and it was the big boy Ross Stewart was the example I would give I think at the point he was playing poorly and, and I'd said I would take him off the park and I think we should take him off the park and the boy Stevie Ferguson had said to me nah I'm pinning my hat on this one I think we keep him on I know he's not playing great but I fancy he'll score and they did score in the game and when he scores you two you just turn around and start laughing at each other because I'm what to <laughs> take him off and he's <laughs> what to keep him on but that was, there was a couple of occasions where that happened I think one with the boy Ian Vigers he scots one in the top corner and it was the other way about I felt we should keep him on and he felt Aye. we should take him off but we stuck with it and he scored the goal so um, the rule for that is you just don't ever make a sub <laughs> don't make a sub <laughs> just let me know what you've got <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no it's, it's a different dynamic now Aye. as I say we still 
Stevie um, because, it, well, it is manager and assistant, but mm -hmm. I can give you Saturday's a brilliant example of we kind of went to a, it was a sort of 5-4-1, mm -hmm. um, but the change that we made, we felt helped us just by the changes Kilmarnock had made. But it wasn't sitting having a major debate, it was planting that seed in your, in your ear, you Aye. think about it and then it happens sort of thing. Aye. So it's, it's good both ways, um, but of course I'm all for the way we've got it working just now because it's, it's, certainly, right. it's certainly going well for us now and hopefully it does uh, continue to do so. From the back of that, if you go and change and go down a different road, that's just the manager's decision. I mean, I just yeah. try and give him a different way to look at it and if right. he picks a different way to go, then you need to stand behind that and don't then walk away and say, I told him to do something different. I mean, right. can I do that? Straight to the papers. Oh, exactly. <laughs> I imagine there would be people who would. I mean, and that's right. where that... So he's, told, he's told me all the good decisions so far. As for him and that we senior power group. That's what take over. So that trust thing then comes in. Yeah. I mean, and you need to build that trust up. Aye. Aye. That's it. Well, you, if you're, you need to have a trust in any sort of working relationship, but especially if you're dealing with people yourselves, you know. Mm -hmm. I sound like a mad asshole there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, guys, uh, actually. No, but uh, it's so everything's going well. You're right, right? You've obviously, <laughs> you've, 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 you've obviously, he's a, he's a safe for relegation now. Mm. You know what I mean? There's. It's going to take, and you are know, actually mathematically safe now, aren't you? No, we're not mathematically safe, oh. but I think Saturday was a was a massive win for us. I think that was one that that that's well, it, listen, it helps. I think it helps the mentality. I think it helps 100%. how you approach the the last four games as well. Um, so does this does planning for next season start now? That's it's been going, Chris, for for weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Probably the first week that I took over the job, um, with a few guys out of contract. You've already spoke about some of the players that have been doing really well for us. Mm -hmm. um, I get hit with that one every single time <laughs> at <the> press conference. <laughs> uh, but listen again, it's fine. In, in Man City, it's the same. Because if the players weren't doing well, nobody's going to ask me about them. You know, nobody's going and to talk about them. To it's a compliment to, ah, to, to the players. Aye. It's a compliment to the work that's getting done. Um, so I'm all right with it. I'm absolutely fine with it. I'm comfortable with it. But you could have probably asked me the question six, seven weeks ago, and I would have been telling you that we're, we're well on the roads to having that sort of plan A, plan B, plan C. If mm -hmm. certain guys stay, great. That that gives us a it gives us great options and positions. If they don't, we're kind of quite far down the road with potential options and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But Again, I think any any manager with assault will tell you that that's, that's what you do. You have nice. to be planning for that all the time. We talk about chief executives, don't they? If the manager goes and a club takes the manager, mm -hmm. you should have this list of five guys um, that could potentially take their, their place. Well, I think we need to do that for every position. I don't think you do it just for one position. I think we do it for everything. So you're, you're putting your horn up for a question. <laughs> you, want, you want to go to the toilet, <laughs> Grado? I've got one. You're talking about chief executive. I thought that was a major blow for the old Motherwell when uh, Burroughs, Burroughs went to Aberdeen. Now, obviously, there's, there'll be more tape, but there was a club that you see, he's running that club really, really aye, well, and, aye. A, and a Motherwell fan as well. It must have been a big decision for uh, Burroughs to make that, but it was how did it affect the club? To be honest, it never really affected me because mm. I think at the point that I took over, I knew Alan was going. Um, I know he's a big history with the club, like you said, supporter, yeah. the work he's done. Um, and he decided at that point, it was confirmed at that point, he was going to Aberdeen. So again, if it had been disrespectful, I still speak to Alan and all the rest of it. In my mind, I just had to move on for that. You know, I did get support from him while he was there. Um, but at that point, he's probably taken a bit of a back seat knowing that there's a new manager in, there's a new kind of way forward and somebody else will be taking mm -hmm. his place. So at no point did they ever step my toes, at no point did they ever create a scenario that was awkward for me, quite the opposite. Um, but probably my mindset was that we just need to, we need to think about what comes next it's and next. not so much what's happened right. in the past. And that was kind of how I set it in my mind. And um, we've, we've not had a permanent replacement as a chief executive, but we do have one of the board members at this minute in time acting as a... Tom Cowan. No, it's not Tam, no, no, although I got a message from him at the weekend, no, 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 it was not, no, <laughs> but we've, we've got one of the boys in just there, or one of the guys in for the board just now, and he's doing a brilliant job for us, mm. um, but that's only a short term fix, um, I think the board want to replace long term, and they always talk about chief executive should be the guy that has mm. that sort of 10 year plan into it, rather than managers uh, sometimes now, what's the, what's the average expectancy of it? 10 game plan. 10 game, 10 game, my, 10 game. But, but it's funny, you're talking about the 10 games, but an interesting, right? Because we always we talk about in this podcast about right uh, managers that take in charge for like um, the time being, right, and then they get the job and it ends up going downhill. But it's Aye. it's not been like that with Mother Will, isn't it? No, because no, you get that. Because that's what you said Robson got the job last week. We're going to watch them end up dropping points. Right? Yeah. No, I said it's going to happen, but you feel Aye. as if that sometimes does happen. Did you get kind of scared about that happening? 
Nah, uh, I think most of the games were lost. We lost to Rangers um, mm, at home, so I think we were, I can't remember what it was, six games in or something like that before we lost one, oh, something like that, five games in or something like that, whatever it was. Um, and the game we lost against Rangers, I actually thought we'd done well. We got our nose in front and then we got level at a right good time. Mm. Um, you will disagree with me, but Fashion Sakala was offside. Oh. Oh, it's that side for here to fuck up. Fifth year. I think that tells its story. You're going to see that. You're going to see that. You're going to show that. But I when when we lost that one, at no point do you think like you can lose a game to Rangers and you can lose a game to Celtic. But at no point do we think that we were miles off it. I think the only other game we lost was Dundee United in in this run as well, where we created a a, a barrel of chances and didn't convert them. So. You're having a oh, no, I'm thinking about that game. Did you still score an offside goal? No, no. And then, with the line, I mean, I think the guy done it to make a soft paint the way he dropped it. He's half, do you remember that? Aye, ah, because there was a the line, and there was a ball 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 <laughs> just had to clear that one up. Aye, aye. Who are you saying? <laughs> Set me off track there, there. <laughs> yeah, I was biting there, I was coming out. You're saying about Dundee United. Aye, so they, that was they, a shock result, I was, I was surprised. Well, at so that. They were on a wee bit. They were on a wee run at the time as well. Um, but even in the game, we didn't feel as if we should have lost it. Nah, we gave nah, plenty nah. of chances. So when you look back at the two games that we've lost, mm-hmm. you know, we've, we've been well in a game against Rangers and we've nah. created a heart full of chances against the United. Nah, so definitely. you look at it and you say, we've been more than competitive in every one we've played. Mm-hmm. So I, even to answer the question, losing to Rangers, w- w- which was the first defeat, you didn't feel as if that that had derailed us in any way. We nah. still felt as if we were in a decent place, you know. Like, going to, like talking about losing to us, and did they need to be then going to Celtic Park and getting a draw, right? How do you prepare? Because obviously Celtic, we know the way they've been playing all season. They've only, they've only lost one game all season in the league, St Mirren, isn't it? Go on there, how do you prepare for that game? With how good they are? It's a wee bit different. Um, and Steve will jump in. One, one of the things that we looked at um, was, you'll see that we play with two young wing-backs, mm-hmm. so two young lads. And if you watch their performance on the day, the whole team was excellent on the day. We were, we were really, really good. But the way Celtic play... It, it is different for, for most other teams. Mm. I think when you dominate the ball as much as they do, we keep speaking about you can put players in any position in the part you want. You know, you talk about inverted fullbacks, you mm. talk about if you watch Kyle, he barely plays on side at any point because they actually break your defensive line in a different position for mm. him then to cash in on it. How many times has yeah, he scored I, within that I, six yard box or that kind of penalty spot because it's cutbacks, mm. but he's already been in an offside position. It's I, just the second phase. So we try to kind of, <laughs> without going into great de- detail on it, we try to divide a different plan through our kind of wing backs as to how we would try and stop Celtic, stem them in that wide area. Mm. And I think I think the two young lads were outstanding at it on the day. They were they were brilliant. Max Johnson and James Furlong on the left hand side, both nineteen to mm. go to Celtic Park. The way they are playing, the chances they create, they, they were outstanding. Every player was, but the way they play is different. So probably we spend a lot of time on going through sort of waves of attack, phases of play, all that sort of stuff that will probably bore you. But we spend a lot of time on that. But we work a lot with the ball and a lot. With without the ball but I've I had something I heard I think ages ago from Sean Dice he was preparing for a game against Man City when he was the Burnley manager yeah. and he said that the whole week was going to be prepared to we'll have 20% of the ball so you oh, think about it we do right. most of the things and we say mm-hmm. alright we'll pass it for A to B and we're in possession of the ball and he spoke about well we're, not, we're going to work most of this week if not all of it without the ball because that's generally what's going to happen in this mm-hmm. game and there's no point kidding ourselves on we can approach that a little bit like that we went heavier on we don't have the ball so what are we going to do when, when we get it back um, and one of the things we'd worked on was trying to leave big Kevin Van Veen up the park in a 1v1 situation because we thought Celtic would try and play 1v1 against him at some point but mm-hmm. we fancied that he could do what he'd done Mm-hmm. So defensive aspect, but also that that area how you carry a threat as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was totally different, and and I think that that's our mindset. Fair to say, as as coaches, managers, is to think that every game's completely different. So how we prepared for Celtic at Parkhead was completely different for how we prepared to play against Seiko Malik at home aye. at the weekend. It's no disrespect, it's just that they're completely different games and oh, it's a different aye, approach. It is, aye, it is. Of course, 100%. And the, the goal comes from Van Veen staying up the park at corner. We would not bring everybody back every defensively. Aye, we aye, it, but it says we'll keep them up the pitch and that's Celtic at the pass. corner. We win the back of the edge of the box, one pass and then it's yeah, you get the goal. You know, So that was a wee mindset change for that game. Mm-hmm. Should have got beautiful Nister. 
Well, he's on my phone. Have you signed him for that? Maybe they hung the phone out on him. Feel frail to prepare, prepare to frail. Ah, really? Oh, I'm telling you. That's not bad, is it? <laughs> wait, 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 that's his partner as well. Yeah, 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 I'm using that one. I'm using that one. I'm going to go to training Monday, you go to that one. I'm using that one. I'm using that one. Can I tell you something? We're sports scientists, the boy Liam Jukes, and him and Liam Jukes sit beside each other and that's their part all day long and see when they cr- one of them cracks it they, all, they know they've got a good audience because the other guy's killing his cell <laughs> 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 that's horrendous that's terrible Liam's got better ones than you well use your ones <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that one <laughs> Get yourself over to performancetires.net. If you are needing tires, then I'm telling you, this is the place to go because performance tires are going to sort you out with the best tires on the market at low, low prices. They are available in, uh, obviously, all across Scotland, but they've got branches in Annie's Land, Air and Kermunnock, and they cover all of the central belt. Now, they provide a professional tyre fitting service. They've got all the up-to-the-minute up fitting equipment, and they'll take care of your precious alloys, the wheel balancing, accurate wheel alignment, that's all sorted. They stock all the major tyre brands for light trucks and vans, 4 before's cars and vans. And they supply all season tyres, winter tyres, and they run flat tyres for all the seasons. Now, if you're looking for a Pirelli, if you're looking for a Hankook, if you're looking for a Yokohama, if you're looking for a Lazo, Laza, they are the specialists with Lazas. If you're looking for a Laza, get yourself to performancetires.net. Check your local branch and uh, make sure that they all offer the service that you're looking for. All the mechanical work is done by timed, served technicians. And at Performance Tires, you're going to get the best tires in Scotland at competitive prices. Performancetires.net. Keep 100% of your claim, Chief for Claims. If you've been hurt in a road accident that wasn't your fault, you should really talk to G4 Claims first. Unlike road accident solicitors, we don't charge you for our services, which could see you better off. To keep 100% of your compensation, have a chat with Nicole and the team. You'll be glad you did. Search online for G4 Claims. Keep 100% of your claim, G4 Claims. Brilliant. Could they use that? I know. It's one of them. We talk about the fullbacks having a great game in Parkhead. Mm. See, man, get Borna, backstick Borna, everything. Mm. Big backstick, though. You saw, man. But see, for yourself as well, it must be a hell of a commute going all the way from Old Trafford up to (laughs) (laughs) up to (laughs) Fuck Park. James so Stevie obviously you've came for the Celtic you set up yeah right um is a big part of your ideals to bring the youth players through at Motherwell as well. Obviously, Motherwell is there's a lot of moving parts, like you said, but to bring in finances to the club, a huge part of it would be to bring through your young players and sell them on for a bit of money, which you've been successful at over the last few years. You know what I mean? Like uh, Turnbull and the boy that Rangers signed as well, and there's a lot of talk just Tasty, now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Max, Max Johnson as well. There's, he's been linked to be foreign, foreign teams as well. Yeah. So um, is that... See, see when something like that happens, is there a, a, a pride, but there's always a, oh Christ, we've lost that, that player as well. I think there's always a pride at, at a club like Motherwell when you look, even guys like Phil O'Donnell, or mm-hmm. some who went down to England, did really well. And that, that youth product's there, mm-hmm. you know, and we can hopefully add to it. It's getting headed up the now with the next, obviously, player David Clarkson, and, he's, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of young players, 14s, 15s, coming through the system. As fans, I think fans first and foremost want to see them in their team. Yes. And, um, let's see, my set background Celtic, but I, I, I'm at the minute living in Falkirk, mm-hmm. and all my fa- pals are Falkirk fans. And they've had players touch their first team for a couple of games, and then away to England, and they aye. don't want that. Aye, they want aye. them there for a couple of seasons, then get money on them. So it'd be good to Max Johnson could hopefully stay in and develop next season. Uh, the other ones coming through, but as, as fans, I think they want to see their players, uh, youth players coming through identify as your player and then when they go to a big club in England or abroad mm. that's a Motherwell product you know Is there any that are chapping on the door now? Yeah we've got we've got a number of good young players we, we, we do and again this is where it's a wee bit of change of mindset for me 
Chris, because when I was up north, it, it's a limited pot as much as mm -hmm. it's a big landmass, you know, when you look at the area, um, the actual quality of player and the number of good players that you can get is, is limited. Right. But when I come down the road, obviously moving back uh, down south, then you, the, it's, it, it's a bigger pond in terms right. of the talent. And I think that Motherwell have been very good, as Stevie says, over, over years, identifying the talent getting them into the first team, well, mm -hmm. first developing them through their academy, but then putting them in the first team. And it's very much something that we both think about. If if you're ready and, and we think you can offer something, then neither one is scared to put young players. And I think we've shown that because we've got Dean Cornelius who's played almost every game for us, Max Johnson, James Furlong. So we've got a number of young guys. Uh, also got Lennon Miller. Uh, is that, is yeah. Of course. He's... I, I met Lennon when he was a young boy, like he was 12 or something yep. at the time, and he used to always like, keep an eye out for him. Aye. And sure enough, the youngest player in history at Motherwell, if I'm not wrong. Yep. Yeah. And that was a game just during the season against Inverness. Inverness, yeah. Uh, as a sub. Yeah. Yep. And so, you know, like, it's a it's fantastic to see like, the young players coming through. But like you touched on there as well, and I've said it to the boys a lot of times as well, a lot of them see the money down south and then you never hear them again. And that's that's worrying for Scottish football as a whole, I think, you know what I mean? So see if we can somehow manage to keep these young players in our game for a for a larger period of time, then it's gonna have a kick on for the national team and stuff like yep. that as well. Do you agree with that? Yeah, there's a couple of, there's a couple of aspects and I'll let you jump in as well, but there's a couple of aspects for me. If if you don't if if you don't see an opportunity to move to that next big club mm. and you're not an established player or you're not very close to being an established mm. player, I would suggest it's not right. So it kind of goes back to Aye. what you're saying. You can see the pound signs and you can say that this is a brilliant opportunity for me financially. But I always look back to probably our mindset is it needs to be an opportunity for you to play football. Mm -hmm. Because you kind of become a better player unless you're actually on that pitch on a Saturday or whatever and you're playing in the game day and you're under the pressures of the game and all the rest of it and playing against good players. Mm -hmm. And I spoke about it with two young guys that played at wing back for us against Celtic a couple of weeks ago. We can't recreate that for them and six months of training we can't what happened in that game right. they get experiences for life and they become right. better players right. for life off the back yet mm -hmm. but if you then take that away and then go and pitch them into an under 23s team say down south or something like that then their, their, their development's just it's hampered it's right. and, and sometimes it can be derailed so we always look at it and can we be a place where you can play 30 plus games of football because I don't think you've had a real season unless you've played 30 plus games mm -hmm. of football mm -hmm. you can dip in and play 10 you can dip in and play 5 it's not a real season if you win Aye. something you can't be jumping about in the team photo saying oh I've been a huge party you've not with 30 40 games then we're starting yeah, to talk right, a serious right, season right. so I would be looking at it as a parent's point of view as an agent's point of view whether I'm a manager or, or, or not but from a football fan's point of view I'd be saying are you actually going to get an opportunity to play 30 games of football and if the answer is yes then it could be the right move mm -hmm. but if another 30 or 40 games at a club like Motherwell helps you mm -hmm. to pursue the next part of your career and by the way Chris we're not stopping anybody from moving that's the other Aye. part because in Scotland we have to be selling clubs Aye. for a business model for us to bring in more finance to for us to kick on and keep living and all the rest of it you need to bring in players you that's, need to sell your David Tumbles that's, that's, that's the point I was that's making right. you yeah. get that pride of seeing them going on but then you also think to yourself Maybe not, the, maybe not the right yeah. move for, for him, you know what I mean? Like, you've yeah. seen it yourself, Stevie, as well. I always go back to Islam Farouz, at yeah. Parkhead. You know, he'd seen the bright lights of Chelsea, London and stuff like that. Went down there and then he never... He's retired, he's only 27. Anonymous. You know what I mean? I think but the Brexit's changed a lot as well because mm. the Scottish market's a lot more attractive with young players ah. now to the English teams. Ah, Explain yeah. that, because I was seeing this all day. How does that So they can't bring the players in from... Like they would normally go to France and Spain, and Portugal. Mm -hmm. So they're now bringing in they're going to Scotland. So when when I was playing a long time ago, you weren't getting a move to England until you were an established football player, Aye. first team playing two hundred games or whatever. These boys are going at fifteen, sixteen. Exactly. The young boys that went for Rangers down to Aston Villa, Rory Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, the boys out Celtic, of Germany, yeah, Germany for the Celtic. You have the boy mm -hmm. Mahadi went from Celtic to, to Leeds United. Mm -hmm. now, what, that well, you said that, that uh, is it Barry Hepburn and another boy went down to Bayern, Bayern Munich. Munich. And the, I'm not, I can't, the boy's uh, name's escaping me just now, but he was on the bench for the Bayern first That's team right, yeah. at the weekend there. Mm. So he must be doing all right, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but like, it's the ones that are lost to, to these teams. Like With the greatest respect to them, like, I would much rather play for like, a Motherwell than go down and play for like a Bristol City or something mm -hmm. like that, you know what I mean? It, it's, so then also you've got also got to remember English clubs maybe coming in and going, oh, by the way, 
We'll buy your family. Aye, we'll get you. We'll pay your mum's mortgage. Yeah. I forget you. We flat in London. Mm. Did it? Did it? It's half of Scottish clubs to see that. You know I, mean? I think that there is. should be some sort of law, bro, and that you can't have a football agent in twenty twenty one or something. No, it's sixteen. I, I don't. It's sixteen. It's sixteen. I don't think you, you mentioned the player earlier on, and, and I'll give you a wee bit context on it as well. Mm. Lennon Miller. Mm -hmm. So I think. I don't know if you guys know Lee, Lennon's dad, Aye. or come across Lee, but I think it was a decision to be made sort of a year ago. And, mm -hmm. and Motherwell obviously wanted to keep Lennon and wanted to have him um, in the building because I think a lot of people felt they could really kick on Aye. and they could mm -hmm. be an established first team player at Motherwell, but then beyond. Um, and I'm not trying to heap any pressure on young Lennon. He's been doing excellent. Yeah, he, yes. As good a player he is, he's an even better boy, Aye, you know, which is an nice boy, um, But I think by taking advice for his dad that had been in the game, had spent time down south, Scottish International and all the rest of it, when most clubs or a lot of clubs across Britain look really looking at him and really been interested in him, I think he'd agreed that the best place for him for the next three years would be to be playing at Motherwell. Mm -hmm. So he's 16 just now, he's he come on at Celtic Park and I draw at Celtic Park and, and performed really well for sort of 20 minutes, didn't he, in, in the game, mm -hmm. uh, when, when you take in all that injury time that you get at, at Celtic <laughs> Park. Well, it's, yeah. we need the 20, especially yeah. when it's one each. But no, they'd, uh, he'd played in that game, but... I, do, I think if he was taking advice from different quarters and from people maybe with less experience Aye. and less knowledge, um, then I think he would potentially be down south just now. Aye. And I think that the best thing for his career is to be at a club like Motherwell. Now, it wasn't myself or Stevie that brokered that deal or come to that agreement, Aye. but we've picked up the pieces and we are now in post. Aye. And we're looking and we're saying, brilliant for the parents, absolutely superb for the parents, Aye. the agent, and for the football club because they come to an agreement that's really going to allow the boy to flourish and, and, mm. and, and for him to maximise the undoubted talent that he has. Has I mean, a prime example is, would you call him Bellingham? He's feel as yeah. an, an old copper. Mm. He's his agent. You know, when he was young, he had all his options to go to wherever in, in England, but then it was his fear that went, let's go to Germany, apply your trade there, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, because you know? teams like Dortmund have got a, have got a history of bringing through the young, yeah, the young yeah. players. Yeah. Right, like, like we're saying there, like Motherwell, it's obviously it's on a grander scale in Dortmund, right? But it's the same kind of setup, you know. They bring through their own youth. They they pick the best players in England who maybe aren't getting time, you know. Like uh, remember Bayern were trying to get Ruben off his cheek for a long time, and Bellingham, but Bellingham's brother stayed in England just now. But there's talk of him going uh, over to Dortmund as well. But now Jude Bellingham's Madrid. pretty much. Signed, sealed Real for Madrid. Real Madrid. Yeah. So, right. see if you play the long game, like you say, you play the long game, then it's going to bear fruit as long as the player has got the talent. But I think a lot of players are maybe striking while the iron's hot, so, you know. And uh, football's a short career. I know that's a that's a bit yeah. No, but the, the argument there is sometimes like with the amount, like Hayley said a minute ago, the money getting flung, uh, getting flung at these young boys, it's hard for them to say no. Right. And that, especially the way football's went, especially down south, it's like the money's, un it's insane. But it goes back, it goes back to what we were saying earlier on. I think you'd asked us a question yeah. at start, did I say that I didn't want the job to begin with? Mm -hmm. But think about kind of what I was saying there as well. Yeah. I'm saying it's not always the right thing just to jump in and say, I'm just going to do it because there's a contract on the table exactly. and somebody wants right. me to do the job. It needs to be for the right reasons. Exactly. But it's exactly the same in this situation right. as well. And like you say, yeah, we see all the pound signs. We mm -hmm. see that there's a, a brilliant deal there. There might be a house involved mm -hmm. and all the rest of it. But if you believe that you're good enough and you're that you can get reach, that you're, it's going to be there. Exactly. It's going to be there. Right. It just might be there a better opportunity. Right. You know, exactly. it helps the football club. Right. You end up with a better deal. But when you go down there, you're the guy that's going to play in your position. Mm -hmm. They're signing yeah. you to play in a position. It's not just to be another number. Yeah. Well, like Gilmore recently. Well, we were talking yeah. to yeah. Reese McCabe. We were talking to Reese McCabe recently, and he had the option of Everton or Sheffield uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Aye. and he was guaranteed first team with Sheffield, Sheffield. Wednesday. But uh, David Moy says you're going to be part of the under 23s project, so he chose Sheffield Wednesday because that's going to get him the experience that he needed to kick on. Yeah. You know. Are you talking about Billy Gilmore there, Stephen. Mm -hmm. The other side of, like, we're delighted Lennon's decided to stay, but Billy Gilmer backed himself mm -hmm. at a young aye, age when he, he probably aye. could have been in that Rangers team and using the lower division. Probably. No, probably. Actually, no, we, and, and I, I hate the Highland League. Pedro was, no. one, Pedro, Pedro was, I'm sure it was, was it Pedro that was going to start, start him? I think something happened on a Friday. Was it Warburton? Warburton was going to have a, a bash in the Scottish Cup. And then Warburton left, and then another manager came in. He never actually made his debut, but I think that was the summer then that he ended up going aye. to Chelsea. But he could have played hundreds of games for Rangers, oh, aye. albeit oh, aye. not in the top league, mm -hmm. right? And aye. he could have, but he backed his ability to of go course, to Chelsea. Mate, of course, and did really, and obviously never quite 
made it over the line, stayed over the line at Chelsea, but mm. what a career just, just, just the one Champions League winners made him. Exactly. 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 So, exactly. There's always the other side of it. We're delighted Lennon stayed. We think Lennon's uh, development's best. Sort of but there's some other good him. kids there as well. Nice. There's some other good young players right. in there as well. Um, our 18s were over at the uh, Auckin Howie yesterday, weren't they? And, mm. and they won 3 0 against Rangers. So mm. there's some talented right. boys there, some good kids there. That's, that was a good wee debate there, wasn't it? <laughs> um, no, it really, really was. Um, what I wanted to ask you was, as a manager, right, Saturday night, what's it like when you get bet? He's going up the road and he's going back into the house and misses and all the rest of it. Is it? <laughs> no, but sure you hear of managers that you maybe have plans to go for a wee dinner and stuff like that, go for... Go to the pictures or whatever, and then it doesn't go to plan. How does that? It's a fair point. I know. Aye, that's a fair question, mate. Is it not? Well, I'll let you lead. It is. <laughs> I, I think I was worse as a player when I lost. I would never. You think that's it? I've been beat. I've cancelled Christmas night out. I've been beat as a player. Aye. Slightly different as a coach. I was only a manager for a short period, but it does affect you differently because mm-hmm. you've got the whole club, you've got all the players and whatever, and and you do go home. You're gutted, you sit and watch the tell, you put match of the day on or whatever, and then you go through Aye. it and you through it. I don't know what the manager's like, but the opposite side when you win, Aye. honestly, you're like, you're like what's for a picnic that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're out on it and whatever, but Aye. I think the when you lose, doesn't know which <laughs> <time>. <laughs> so, things like that. But I think it's, it's, it's difficult because you need to be mindful of the fact you've just lost a game. You wouldn't want your players going to celebrate if you just lost a game, you know. Aye. I'm the worst ever. I knew that was coming. I've, I've, I've got four kids, um, and see that one where you know that you should be talking to your kids, and you know that you should aye, maybe be aye. playing a game or something like that, and you physically can't do it. So I, I mean, you are actually doing it, but you're just. But you're not there, aye. really. Um, but my missus is unbelievable that way because I think through so much time she's just now knows to usher the kids into our room and put a movie on or something and just stay out his way. I'll give the best example. I, I remember doing it. Um, I was up north. I was managing at Ross County and a bit younger and a bit less experienced at that mm. point and really emotional at times as in I've lost a game and I want to fight with the world and all that type yeah. of stuff. And my family had come up to visit me. I've got my brother, my, uh, my sister-in-law, uh, my mother, my father, they've all come up and you've got the weekend planned. We'll oh, get right. dinner and we'll do this and we'll do that. And I never said a word. We, <laughs> drew, we drew the game. We drew a game. We drew a game. We should have won the game. And I never spoke to anybody the whole Saturday night. They got up on the Sunday morning. Breakfast is made. Still right. sitting there. Still no said a word to anybody. And my lasting memory was them all packing up their stuff and walking out the door and going, he's a complete and utter arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> and you've not seen them since? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> still sending my Christmas cards. But, uh, but no. It, I'm still it, locked it in was. that room with the veins. <laughs> and see, when they, got down the, when they got home, I think I maybe phoned in the Monday or something and we're going, Listen, I can't apologise enough for that. And then Aye. that's that understanding of, I know you're not trying to do it, but listen, see if people are travelling hundreds of miles to come and see you, probably need to say hello and you probably need to mm. dip into a wee bit of chat, but I, I physically couldn't do it. Eh? But I, I, think I'm, I think I'm better. I'm better see, now. I get that. I mean, I... <sighs> Don't. See if I he gets a bad storyline on River City, man, he doesn't <laughs> speak to his missus for a week. What I'm going to say is, even for a fan's perspective, well, like good. even Rangers, yeah, like especially, oh, especially this season. No, you can't even understand it. Even though we've this season. I, I really... I take it bad, so I can't even begin to imagine if you work at the club, you're the manager, or you're a player. I, I, I would think, you know, I'm a no, you're bad, not not terrible not man. I take it so bad, man. It's going to be good on Saturday at the Pavilion, then, isn't it? If you sell like beaties, <sighs> we've got we've got a, a wrestling show on Saturday in the Pavilion, and Stevie's involved, I'm involved, and Grado's involved. Why all the games on? Oh, <laughs> of course, they announced the split, didn't they? And I was like, yeah. I said, they're all familiar. Your, your, um, wrestling, wrestling shows on. So, I, I hope I get to see Stevie in a bad mood and Saturday. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Eh? <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not in the ring with you. <laughs> 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 Who's right. Saturday, boys? You got to come. Aye, but we're at the pavilion. I think. <laughs> 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 oh, I was limited tickets. Available. Aye, that's limited tickets. Aye. It was a big family. Pavilionfeet.co.uk. I was going to ask about next season. What's the plans? What's the what's the aim? He's a scoop. Who right. who he's interested in? And, and by the way, what do you say to look up players? He's got a wee. Do you ever play football, yours? manager? No, I've never, I've never, no. No? no, no, seriously, no, definitely not. No. What's that app they all going about? Why scout? Why scout? Why scout? Is that the one yes. that Joe Miller owns? 
Joe Malone's one of the sort of. I don't think so. Why is he there? Is every manager got a login? You just get to see who's going to sell. You need to buy a license for it. Each club and each person gets a, a login. And then there's oh. all the database, games, players, Play transfers. Games? I've run all the oh, games, you watched all the games, games. games. <laughs> under 21 games, you watched the international games, I'm not sure mm. what it's the games you want and what it's written up for us. <laughs> so, like, I, I take it you just use that then? I, 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 <laughs> that's first time for me saying what's the plan, what's the aim for next season, because I'm talking about... But he's, he did say earlier, he uh, says the plans are starting to speak uh, to now, well, sorry did we weren't. No, it's just funny how you, he's been half on a tangent and Ben's taking a fit in the I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you games on Wise Scout, you something can so you talking about stuff. Tetris now? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what you meant, you know what I mean? But uh, so I take it you choose that then? Uh, yeah. So we, we've kind of got a log on. Um, mm. We've got we've got head of recruitment at Mullerwell, which I've never worked with before, mm. but you've obviously got somebody working in the background constantly. Right. We're talking about players, left, right, centre, um, and it's as simple as typing in a name um, for a player that's playing wherever. Stevie said under 23s could be. Is it get everybody? Pretty much. Yeah, you, you, there's different there's different licenses. You can open it up to the world. You can open it up Aye. to maybe <laughs> five or six other countries. Whether mm. it was you were targeting a certain market, like obviously Asia seems to be a big thing just oh. now, um, <laughs> and it's been really successful in Scottish football. So that type For of thing team. you can do. It. Well, we, is we, it we, 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 <laughs> we could give Morelos if he gave Van Zee. Uh, <laughs> a swap deal. Aye. <laughs> Should take him. <laughs> I think I'll keep Kev to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it like when you're going to book a hotel and you go, like like you go can I get these players that are going to be in between like... It's, it's nothing like that. Right? <laughs> so like, see like, I, I, I understand what you're saying, is there like a filter that you can go, huh? I want this player to have this, these sort of right stats, these sort of stats, and it brings up their names? Aye, well, again, we, we've got scouts as well, so what they do is, we, we've got like a database, mm. so they filter in all the data of certain players, so... Right. We'll then start to build up a criteria of whatever position you're looking for. It could be a striker or something right. like that, and you're looking at that number of reports you do, and then you start to match them up against maybe other players that you've been looking at, that type that of thing. That sounds just like football manager. Uh, it it like really that. does. Uh, it's good you, contract details when it's up, when, when it expires, when uh, things are aging, all that sort of stuff. Tell you how much they're on and all that. And no, it doesn't give you Don't you ever get to the. No, no. Get, you, get, you get various things that they'll like, have seen things before telling you what players are on and all that sort of stuff, mm. and it's, oh, it's miles right. off. Miles it's off. Miles right. off. Right. Yep. Oh, cool. But anyway, uh, so obviously, he's a, he's a building for next season with that. What's the targets for next season? Top six, Europe. The way these are going, I think top six would probably be a given, to be honest with you, if you can carry this form on to next season. Aye. I'll be honest, I'll give you the diplomatic answer is that I don't ever think that well I've never been one for genuinely pitching out there and telling you this is what we're going to do I think right. sometimes you see it and you can fall flat in your face, I think what we need to be kind of mindful of is that I think there's a lot of teams stronger than what they were before and teams that have got far bigger budgets than Motherwell mm -hmm. and again that is the diplomatic answer mm -hmm. but when you look at teams like Rangers, Celtic, Hearts, Hibs, Aberdeen Mm -hmm. Then for me, they in, in terms of finance, fan base, all that type of stuff, they're miles ahead of an, another chunk of clubs. Um, mm -hmm. And then you start to bring into the equation the clubs that are sitting in the in the league table just now. You, I think you could probably shove clubs like Dundee United up closer aye. towards your your Aberdeens and your Hearts yeah, and your Hibs. I think that's probably the potential. Fair to say. Uh, like uh, Queens coming up, who have got a massive budget for a for a club their size as well. So they don't have the fan base, Chris. But I yeah, mm -hmm. they've obviously got right good mm -hmm. backing. Um, what's happening there but I think for the likes of ourselves Kilmarnock uh, Livingston Ross mm -hmm. County there's another bracket of teams mm -hmm. but what we really hope and hopefully what we've shown over the last kind of period of time the last few months is that that we feel that we're a match for for the majority of teams when right. we're when we're firing on all cylinders I think we've been good in every game in spells not sustained through 90 minutes sometimes we've maybe been off it but I think we've we've shown that we really have well listen we've built something short term it's my job and Stevie's job to go and see if we can sustain that and I think if we can get the levels that we've been playing at just now then I don't think there's anything to suggest that we couldn't be up around about that mix and in the conversation for top six and potentially some of the targets that have been there for Motherwell in the past um, but it will be difficult because again go down the route it's been a, a really really hard financial year for Motherwell you look at it you're on the third manager there's been a massive yeah. influx of players we've got 
we've got an awful lot of players at the club and far too many players if I'm being honest for a club the size of Motherwell so my job's then going to filter back to try and redress all of that which as you know sometimes means that there's cuts and turns. Ah, sometimes means that you have to rein things in conversations that you were talking about it earlier is, on it is but you know what I'm, 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 I'm always ultra positive in that sense as well that doesn't mean to say that you're any less than what you are you know mm -hmm. I still believe that that could that, that could still give us an opportunity to reduce numbers and still have that opportunity to try and push towards a top set, uh, top six place, and I think if we're doing that at Motherwell, I think we're we're having a we're having a good season to be honest. Absolutely. I mean, well, it seems to, it seems as if you really have a kind of finger on the pulse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's having one today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say that back again. I can't get this out. Well, well, I, I like to say that they're, they're doing well. How do you say that? Well, he's really hit the ground running. <coughs> Since she's have joined, this is our whole star. No, I was just about to think, with <clears throat> well, he's have hit the ground running. I have to say, <laughs> 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 that laugh was broken. <laughs> no, that is just there. He's have hit the ground running, ah. and all the besties. No, good luck, luck man, for the rest of the season and next season trips. Thank you, thank you, thank you, boys. Thank you very much for coming on. That laugh is excellent. <laughs> <laughs>